guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be doing another book review. I am going to be reviewing and discussing Dorothy Must Die by Danielle Page. So I actually really enjoyed this book. It was different than what I was expecting. I wasn't really sure what to expect going into it because I didn't really know what this book was about. Kind of a retelling of The Wizard of Oz. It takes place after Dorothy does her thing in Oz that we all know about. You know, if you've seen The Wizard of Oz, which if you haven't, you need to stop right now and go do that and then come back because you should be reading this book if you haven't seen The Wizard of Oz. She goes back to Kansas and then the story kind of takes place sometime after that. It follows our main protagonist. Her name is Amy. She is the reject girl. She's the girl no one wants to be friends with. Her mom doesn't really care about her. Her dad left her. They live in a trailer park. One day she comes home from school and her mom leaves her and a, tora and a tornado comes, obviously, because how else are you going to get to the Oz? Sweeps Amy off to the land of Oz and she gets to Oz and it is absolutely nothing like what we see in The Wizard of Oz. On the back of the book it says, Your mission, remove the Tin Woodman's heart, steal the Scarecrow's brain, take the Lion's courage, and then Dorothy must die. Only you can make Oz a free land again. The story follows Amy's pursuit in the land of Oz to free Oz. She needs to make Oz the once majestic, wonderful land that we know of. For being a YA book, it was very graphic. I felt it to be a little bit more violent than other YA books that I've read. The author kind of just described things very bluntly. She didn't use a lot of fluffy words to describe scenes. It took a, a little bit of time to get used to. Also, it was very difficult for me to come to terms with the fact that these uh, characters that we have grown to love in The Wizard of Oz are bad. They're the villains in the story. They're not singing in the yellow brick road. They are evil. They are villainous. They are our bad guys. I wouldn't say it's like a slow moving book or like it's just very misleading. The, the plot that you think you're following changes drastically. This book ended on a wonderful like cliff, not like a cliffhanger, but like on a wonderful note. And it just, it was like mid action and it ended. If you are a fan of like fairy tale retellings, story tale retellings, twists and spins on the classics, then I think you would really enjoy this book. So with that, I'm going to move on into a little bit more of a spoilery discussion. So if you haven't read this book, you should not continue to watch this video because I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. So like I mentioned previously, I felt like the back of this book was very misleading. It tells you that this is the mission and this is where we're going and this is kind of what the purpose of the story is and then you don't even get to this mission until like literally the last chapter. The wizard finally tells her that this is her mission, that you know she actually needs to take the heart, steal the brain, and take the courage before she can even kill Dorothy. There are wards protecting Dorothy and you can't kill her until you remove these wards and Dorothy doesn't even know about these wards. We don't know about these wards. This book is just very mysterious. It keeps you in the dark on so many things. Talk about this one true princess, Ozma, and Ozma is a descendant of fairy blood and she was kind of kept away or hidden or missing for many many years and then she returns to Oz after the wizard leaves and the wizard leaves in his hot air balloon at the end of the classic Wizard of Oz tale. So the wizard leaves, Ozma comes in, Ozma takes over, she rules in this wonderful, like, happy time, everything's grand, there's singing, there's happiness, and then Dorothy returns. I would like to know how Dorothy returns, like how does she get back to Oz? They don't tell you. Dorothy comes back to Oz. In her world, she's not the savior and she wants the, the fame. Ozma dubs her a princess and they kind of start to rule Oz together. But as time goes on, it seems like Dorothy is taking more of a leadership role and Ozma's kind of taking the back seat and kind of starting to wither away. She's not really all there mentally. Something's going on with her, Some, they're doing something to her, and then she just kind of starts to disappear entirely. Dorothy runs Oz, Dorothy's in charge. I would really, really like to know where Ozma was, how she got back to Oz, because obviously she's important. She's the one true ruler of Oz. How can Dorothy, just a farm girl from a from the other place, overthrow the one true ruler of Oz? At the end of the story, we find out that Ozma was disguising herself to look like Pete. Was that really Ozma? Like the whole time? And then what was that like weird phantom Ozma that she saw in the palace? 
was it just Ozma disguised as Pete at the very, very end? Was, was there ever really a Pete? Or is Ozma working with the wizard? That wizard obviously knew when Amy arrived in Oz because Pete was there waiting for her. But was that Pete or was it Ozma? There's just so much that you don't know, like at all. And the whole book, you're under this assumption that Amy is working with the Order and their main goal is to kill Dorothy. Obviously, if this is a trilogy, she's not going to die at the end of this book because then what would the other two books be about? Amy's planning to kill her. She doesn't get this mission statement from the wizard until, like I said, the last chapter. I'm confused as to why we were led on the whole book. She just had to kill her and then at the very end they were like, just kidding, you have to actually do all these other things. I felt like that should have come sooner in the book. And she takes the Tin Man's heart at the end of this book, so she only has two more things to collect before she can kill Dorothy, but what is she collecting them for? What is she doing with them? Where where are they going? Is she making like some kind of like witchy spell? This is like the book of you don't know anything. You just kind of read along, there's a story going on, there's a plot, but you know there's a whole lot of things you're not being told about. And that's kind of frustrating in a way. Thinking about it now, I'm kind of frustrated that I don't know more. It's, it was just very odd to see the scarecrow and the Tin Man and the Lion and Dorothy and Glinda as being so evil. I think Glinda is a little bit more in charge than Dorothy even realizes. Like she's pulling the strings and Dorothy doesn't even realize it. And I was so sad when Gert died. I thought she was just such a nice character. I mean, she's the Good Witch of the North. And I always thought that Glinda was the Good Witch of the North, but no, she's the South. Was she always the South? I felt like she used to be the North. It was interesting how in this book, the lines between good and wicked were so blurred. I don't understand how that sweet, innocent girl from Kansas that Judy Garland played becomes this horrendous person. She's so evil. She, she just takes pride in being so mean. Initially, we get to the world. We meet Indigo and we meet Ali. And I'm thinking, okay, a munchkin and a wingless monkey. Obviously, this is her ragtag band of little buddies. They get attacked by the Tin Woodman. He kills Indigo when Ollie flees. Okay, well then who are going to be our sidekicks? Indigo and Ollie would have made like the best sidekicks. I also wanted to briefly talk about the actual plan that the Order sets in motion for Amy. They spend all this time training her in combat and fighting and in magic. And then they kidnap a maid, use a spell to make Amy look like the maid, and then send Amy to the castle to impersonate the maid. But they tell her, you want to blend in. You want to be as much of a maid as you can. You don't want to stand out. So you really need to pay attention and blend in. Also, if you use any type of magic, Dorothy can sense it. Okay, so you spend all this time training her in combat and in magic, and then you send her on this mission and she can't use any of it. Now that she's with the wingless ones, she can use her combat and her magic and all that stuff but for most of the book when she's impersonating Astrid she can't do that so I feel like they wasted their time just a little bit. What is with those shoes? Side note those shoes they have like an entrancing hypnotizing quality to them where you like want to touch them and you're drawn to them but you're not supposed to touch them. What's so special about them? There obviously is something unique about them if Dorothy never takes them off and doesn't let anyone touch them. Back to the plan. I want to talk about Jellia. Did not see that coming, that she was the contact in the palace for Amy. Like, I didn't see that coming at all. Yet it makes total sense now, thinking back on it, but I didn't, I didn't see that. I thought it was going to be like Pete, maybe the wizard. I thought when she initially came out and said, I'm part of the revolution, yes, I'm the one that's been betraying you and yada yada, I thought that she was just saying that to be a good servant. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. She was the contact and I was so, so horrified when she was brought in at the ball by Dorothy. That was the cruelest thing I think she's ever, like, she did. They reanimated her corpse so that she could serve drinks as a cocktail waitress at the party. I wanted her to be saved. I wanted her to live. She was a, like, thinking back, an extremely good informant like she blended in so well she worked her way up to head maid lady in waiting for Dorothy she had power over all the other maids and 
that she was in a position of power and in a position to gain information. Oh my gosh. When she carried around that dead mouse in her pocket for like a week, I would have just taken it out of my pocket and put it over there. I wouldn't have taken it seriously when Dorothy meant to keep it in her pocket for future minors. I would have thought, okay, just keep it in my pocket for like a day or until I leave this room and then when I go back to my, my quarters, I'll take the, the mouse out. No. No, she just walks around with this dead, decaying mouse in her pocket for like a week. The love interest situation. For most books in YA, I get on board with the relationship and I'm like rooting for them and I want them to be together. The tension is really awesome and like a satisfying means when they finally get together. I'm not really invested in this romance in this book. It's not a focus. I don't know how I feel about the whole Knox and Amy thing, but I want to be more invested in that ship. Like I want her to build that and make me more invested. And I also was kind of thinking maybe she was gonna get together with Pete. Like I kind of was rooting for Pete, but now I'm not sure if Pete was ever Pete. Maybe Pete was Ozma the whole time. How could I ever get the Scarecrow? What is he working on? What is this big plan that he is concocting that is a turning point. I don't want to say it's a revolution because Dorothy doesn't really acknowledge it as being a problem. It's just like that little annoyance over there that I'm eventually going to squash because I squash everything. He's creating something. Like he's building something. He's engineering something. I don't really know. The wizard hints that Maud, Ollie's sister, is an integral part of some type of scheme that the scarecrow is working on what was with the whole like syringe poking in his brain thing that amy had to do on her very first night in the castle they kind of allude to maybe he's stealing brains from other intelligent people so that he can be the smartest in all the oz and he's injecting knowledge into his brain the lion he sucked out your fear he like fed on people's fear and he fed on people an eyeball out of somebody he ate jelly his arm and then the the tin man i think the scariest part about the tin one man the tin man is that he is so unquestionably loyal to dorothy that he would do anything for her i know he would do anything to me to make dorothy happy and dorothy is a very hard bitch to please even toto is like a maniacal evil beast maybe similarly to how the heart the brain and the courage tainted those creatures the shoes tainted dorothy in a way because maybe whatever the wizard gave them tainted them and made them kind of evil so i think that's all i have to say about this book for today overall i did really enjoy it i would recommend it if you are into the whole fairy tale classic story retelling with like a twist type of thing or having an alternate ending to a favorite story. It was really enjoyable and I really liked it. If you've read this book, tell me down below what you thought of it, if you could have some of the same feelings that I did. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will have a new video up for you very soon. And until next time, bye! Slightly different angle. I'm literally in the corner right now. Do you hear the ice cream man? Really creepy green truck. Out of style, out of style. Today I am doing another book review for you today. I'm doing the, that was redundant. I just repeated myself. Try again. I am going to be doing another book. Burk? I'm doing a burk review. What is a burk? I'm never prepared. Let's be honest. Your mission, remove the Tin Man's why is it called a tin woodman? Why? Where did the? Was it not? Was just the tin man? Remove the tin woodman's heart. Steal the care, care crow. I can read. I promise. I'm just getting really, really hot in here. <sighs> so like I. Orthy was back. Orthy. Excuse me. I just burped up my dinner. Did that not even make any sense? Should I try that again? So long, farewell. I do just say your night. I do. I do to you and you and you goodbye. Sometimes my weirdness just knows no bounds.